All right, it's time to get VirtualBox installed. This is what you want to use, Oracle VirtualBox, and you want to get the 64-bit version if you're using a 64-bit um, operating system. Just go ahead and get this one. Right now it's 4.2.1.2. You don't have to worry about anything else below this. Um, hopefully you're using Windows, and I am. that's why I'm going to go through Windows. Um, basically just download this and install it. It's 94 megs. The next thing you're going to need is Incredible PBX itself. I'll link the websites in the description. Now, right here is you're going to get the um, PIAF AST11. So PIAF stands for PBX in a flash. You don't have to worry about reading any of this stuff or doing any other research. I'm going to show you everything. So what we're getting is the green Skype. There's also a purple version. You don't want that. That's for older, like, dedicated installs. It's not an emulated thing. Now, look at this at the top. It's kind of distracting. It says, looking for the latest version? Click here. No, you don't want the ISO. You don't want this. This OVA file is actually like a disk image. It's a, it's a capture of, um, of the whole setup itself. It's 1.9 gigs. It's going to take you a while to download. Hopefully, it doesn't take too long. So basically, just click that, download it. Get uh, put that anywhere. Put it in a put it like in C backslash you know PBX and that's it. Just just put it somewhere, um, and then I'll go through how exactly we're gonna go and do that. Um, you don't need to worry about any other file here. Now, I'm thinking I'm not sure if this is 64 or 32 bit. I'm, it might be both because it doesn't specify. Um, I would not get these other two. So uh, again, if you have 32 bit, I don't know what to do with you. I, I don't know what you should do. I just just get this version. Okay, I'm logged in my server computer remotely using real VNC. And so um, I've got the VirtualBox installed and I've got the file downloaded, about 1.8 gigs or so. It's this OVA file. So all you're going to do is double click it and it should automatically open VirtualBox. And if it doesn't, you can load it another way. Um, these are, leave all the default settings here, but click this button, reinitialize the MAC address for network cards. Hit import, agree, and it's going to take a while, and I'll come back when this is done. All right, now that the image has been imported into VirtualBox, uh, we're going to make some settings here. I just want to mention really quick that if it's been imported in here and you want to delete it, and you want to right-click and go to remove, and then delete all files, that is actually going to delete um, the import itself. It's not going to delete this original file that you downloaded. So don't worry about this getting deleted if you decide to get rid of that someday. So we're not going to delete it. We're going to right click and go to settings instead. Now here, there's a couple settings that you're going to have to change. You want to go into audio, enable audio. In network, you want to Make sure this first one is clicked in ad ad adapter one. Enable network adapter. Pull this down and go to bridged. So then it'll, it should highlight your network adapter in your computer. And finally, system. Um, for me, I actually uh, raised this quite a bit. I raised the memory a little bit. I just wanted to give it some more power. In, in my processor, I went to two CPUs. Um, that's for 64-bit 60 60 users only. And uh, the thing that you want to make sure is unchecked is right here, uh, hardware clock in UTC time. And that's it. Make sure it's unchecked. Hit OK. Now you could double click it, and it will start to load. By the way, you're, it's going to require more and more passwords. So if you're having trouble memorizing all those passwords, all those different passwords you have for all these different websites, there's a uh, website uh, called keypass.info. It's, um, it's a free open source uh, password safe. So it's really nice. I highly recommend it. It's fantastic. I use it every single day. I, the, nobody can memorize all their different passwords. And you can generate passwords, 128-bit passwords. And uh, it's, it's, like I said, it's open source, and it's free, and it's, it's awesome. I use it all the time. I would highly rec recommend it because you're going to have a lot of passwords here, and uh, juggling them isn't very fun. All right, so it's still going here.
By the way, um, for controls, the right control on your keyboard is going to switch between going into the operating system itself and going out of the operating system so you can move this window. So you can move the window right now, but if I hit right control, it's into the operating system, so I can't move the window anymore. That's right control. You're going to be using that a lot. So in this incredible PBX package, this 1.8 gig file, um, it actually has a lot of software in it, a, a lot of good software. That, um, that logo you see at the beginning of my intros, uh, my videos, is actually what it in includes. CentOS, um, Asterix, Free PBX, you know, Apache web servers, all that stuff, mail clients, whole bunch of Linux stuff. You don't have to know anything about Linux to do this, by the way. Uh, I'm going to teach you a few things about it. I'm an amateur too, but I know enough to get this running. So when this is all loaded, we'll come back and um, continue. All right, after it loads, you're going to be, oops. Uh, try not to mess this up, by the way. Be very careful when you're typing in your uh, information. Otherwise, it'll lock you out after three attempts. So the default uh, login and password is root slash password. All right, the first thing we're going to do here, uh, as you can see, it says IP address 192.168.1.102. We're going to get all that changed. Um, everything else looks fine. Um, I'm just going to hit enter. Okay, so here's the command prompt. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is change our root password by typing pass wd. Now we're going to type in a new password. It has to be good, by the way. It has to have um, lowercase, uppercase, and I think even some numbers. Uh, that's why I said KeePass is a good program to keep track of all this stuff. This is your main root login and password. You're going to use this to initially get access to the server every time you start it or every time you log in to it remotely. You're going to be typing this in. So this is going to be the password. It's going to ask you to do it twice, of course. All right, so it updated successfully. Uh, the next thing we have to do is actually set up the password for the free PBX server itself. And this is a, a requirement. All this stuff is a requirement. So we're going to type passwd-master. It's going to say blah, 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 whatever. If you want to read it, go ahead. I hit Y. I'm going to hit Enter. You need to enter a new password. We record a complex password, minimum of eight characters, upper or lower case, at least one number in it. Um, I don't want the random password generator. I'm going to hit B because I want my own. Please enter your password now, then tap enter. All right. It's going to verify that your uh, length is OK. Manual password was accepted. Now remember, this is main. This is the password. That one I just put in is going to be the one that you get into the actual uh, web server itself, which is called MAINT, maintenance. It's applying that password you just put into all those different services. So again, key pass if you want to use it. Don't forget, because the root password is different from the second password we just put in. If you mess this up, if you make a mistake and already forget your password and everything, um, what you can do is get VirtualBox open. Um, stop it, you know, close it, whatever, and then delete it, and then just reopen it and start again. Just follow the instructions again if you, if you mess it up that early. Try not to, though. The nice thing about the VirtualBox stuff is it doesn't affect your Windows 7 install. It doesn't mess with it in any way. 
So if you do make mistakes like that, you can start over, you can save states and all this stuff. I'll get into a little bit more about uh, what you can do in terms of backing up your server, not losing your settings. Uh, the first thing we're going to have to do right after this, though, well, let's see. Okay, so that's done. And I'm just going to type status. Status will show the main screen again. Um, so we're actually going to shut this down now, and we're going to go set up the router. This is important because that IP address I don't like. I want a different IP address because that's going to be the IP address that you log into the server from, from another computer in your house. So it's going to be HTTP, cone slash, slash, you know, 192.168, whatever you put. So I want that changed. I want that something else. So what we're going to do, we always shut down gracefully. Don't just ever just close this program. Uh, you've got to shut down gracefully. You can do that either by going to machines, ACPI shutdown, or you can type shutdown dash H space now. And that'll shut it down gracefully. Now, we're going to get into our router, so that's coming up now. Let's go.